Now, I am very excited. I've just been to the post office to pick up this parcel and I'm hoping this will be something that I'm going to take with me to uh, the end of the month. I'm going to meet another YouTuber and um, his YouTube channel is all about uh, retro computers, retro computer gaming, um, rebuilding, uh, renovating old computers and bits and pieces. Uh, and to go there, what I wanted to do was take with me my very favourite game from when I was a kid. Yes, it is. My favourite game from when I was a kid is Lombard RAC Rally uh, on the Amiga, if you remember that computer. And uh, from the description, it looked like most of the stuff was probably in here. So um, it's exactly how I remember it. With the maps and the... Uh, look at that. A proper instruction manual. Nothing online in those days. every day you see one of those. Uh, now while I was in the gym there, I was um, uh, doing a spinning class today and uh, it kind of, it, in a way, tied in with what I want to talk about today. And in a moment of absolute agony, uh, I was able to uh, switch off and think a bit more about it uh, and it helped me get through it. While I was spinning, there was what, probably 20 of us in there uh, doing 40 minutes worth of spinning uh, and we were pretty much flat out the whole time. How much energy does that produce? And can that produce enough energy to, I don't know, power the LED lights in the room and the music that was playing? Uh, it would be interesting to work it out actually, and I'm sure if I flick through the settings on the bikes, I'm, I'm sure I could have found how many watts I burnt over the time and all the rest of it. Uh, but I didn't have that much mental capacity left at the time. Uh, and I kind of think that I saw maybe, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, that there was a gym somewhere in the UK that were trying to make that work, trying to connect the um, spinning bikes to either a battery or just to the, the, the lights and things within the room. If you know of it or you know anything about it, please let me know because I'd love to have a look at it and see, see if it works. And I just wonder why more gyms don't do it. It must be a good reason for it. Um, but yeah, anyway, so today's topic is about um, uh, energy, home energy, uh, the grid, and in particular, Nissan's take on it. Uh, and this has come about because uh, they've just made a little announcement that's going to take them another step towards their kind of ultimate goal of uh, renewable, um, reusable energy. And uh, I don't know if you remember, maybe, I I'm, I'm think it was probably the beginning of last year, Nissan released a bit of a uh, kind of a, a video of their vision of the future and I'll put a link to it uh, in the description so that you can um, go and have a look yourself but ultimately it talked about um, we were all driving uh, EVs uh, there is uh, contactless charging in the streets so uh, parking spaces that the car can pull into charge up and then uh, and this is going further into the future uh, the cars will be autonomous so once they're charged up they can move to a safe area to allow other cars to come in and charge up in the street that's your uh, that will suit people that don't have home charging if you've got home charging you plug your car in uh, that will charge but it's also got vehicle to grid technology and um, it will effectively monitor your house and give you the um, the power for your house also within your house you'll have a um, re renewable or um, recycled uh, Nissan Leaf or Nissan EV battery and that will work off your solar and the grid will be renewable energy and uh, it will all work together seamlessly to the point where uh, they envisage a future where you can turn up at work drive into your office your car parks itself and plugs itself in but what I want to do today is uh, look at from that kind of uh, vision that Nissan have had what they've done since then and the announcement they've made uh, in the last week so there's obviously lots and lots going on all the time and lots going on behind the scenes but as far as big announcements go the important ones to me um, have been uh, their work with Ecotricity so the uh, rapid chargers are going in all the service stations that is a collaboration between um, several companies but in particular Nissan and um, Ecotricity and without that the Nissan Leaf for lots of people including me probably wouldn't, wouldn't have been an option because Regardless of whether you use it or not, 
it's the idea of having a charging network across the motorway system that will allow you to go places. So that was kind of the first step um, beyond building EVs for me that um, Nissan have really pushed uh, an infrastructure and a, a network of any description. Fast forward then, um, Nissan for a long, long time were talking about what are they going to do with the batteries when their EVs come to the end of their life. Because of course, yes, they can be recycled, the um, metal elements of it, they can all be recycled. Um, but what's the best use of it? And they um, set up, I think it was called X Storage. Now that's basically, they've built out of old car batteries, they've recycled them and made uh, home storage batteries. These batteries can connect to your um, solar panels uh, or any renewable energy source that you've got on your land uh, and they'll charge up while the, the energy is being produced and then you can use them at night. That was a brilliant start. They then uh, collaborated with Ovo uh, who in the UK are an energy providing company uh, and they uh, provided Ovo with uh, their X storage systems so that uh, you could have them in your house and they could be charged off uh, the grid off peak or uh, Ovo have got their own solar uh, installation uh, division uh, and they work hand in hand with um, their solar panels so uh, again uh, Nissan doing what they do best but knowing their limitations at the time. Another really nice little collaboration between Nissan and another company. Fast forward again to this week, um, and Nissan have decided that not only are they going to produce and supply the batteries, they're also going to open their own solar division. And um, what I want to do is have a little look about how that's set up and some of the pricing at the moment. Nissan Energy Solar, that's what they're calling it, this new company or part of or division of their company that's going to supply and fit uh, solar panels and batteries to people's houses. Now uh, this is just another one or another little stepping stone I guess to their end goal uh, and what they're going to provide um, and certainly the prices they've given so far at the moment for here in the UK are uh, six solar panels um, and a battery and the management system to make it work supplied fitted and VAT included uh, for £7,000. Um, I haven't got any details on how much uh, energy or how efficient those solar panels are, but um, that is what they're saying their basic system will cost. They will provide it to you without the battery, uh, but that is somewhere in the region of, or it's just under £4,000 to do that. Um, or you can buy the battery on its own and that's about £6,000. So you can see if you buy it all together, it works out an awful lot cheaper. Nothing greatly different or unusual about what Nissan are doing there, but what this is, is another stepping stone towards uh, the next level, which um, incorporates vehicle to grid. And um, that's coming in the next few months. Uh, it's obviously, it's all part of the 2018 Nissan LEAF. And again, here in the UK, Nissan have signed up with a number of uh, energy providers. Uh, again, one of them is OVO, uh, and they will uh, provide a tariff and the um, technology in order to allow your Nissan LEAF to put energy back into the grid. And you get paid for that. So the idea is at um, quiet times, cheap times, your car will be charging at peak times when the grid needs the energy uh, and it's more expensive, it will buy it back off you. Um, again, nothing new. Feed-in tariffs have been around for years with people with solar panels and renewable energy, but um, this is new technology as far as cars and vehicles are concerned. So that is all going to be happening over the next few months. Um, the one thing the vehicle to grid doesn't allow is for your car to power your house. Uh, and that's something that I think is the next big step forward. Uh, it's, it's proven technology. They're already doing it in Japan with uh, Nissan. Um, and I think it's just another step away now with um, uh, vehicle to grid. What my hope is, and what I've, I'm hoping they haven't um, overlooked, I'm sure they haven't, is if we've got vehicle to grid installed and then we want to uh, use the car to power our house, is the technology provided for vehicle to grid going to allow us to just switch it across to power the house rather than feed back into the grid? I'm hoping it does, because it would be a real shame if uh, a year, two years down the line, the technology becomes available and it's some other um, 
box or something else we need to replace it with. But um, let's hope that whatever happens for the vehicle to grid is transferable. So um, that's the little stepping stones and that's how Nissan have got to where they are now and how they are striving forward to get to that ultimate goal of um, you know, being off of uh, fossil fueled energies and renewable energies supplying us wherever we happen to be uh, and our vehicles being very much integrated into that. Uh, that's as much as I know for now. When I find out more, obviously I'll let you know, but for now I'm going to uh, end the vlog. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to like and share. Uh, and don't forget you can find me on um, uh, tw Twitter, Twitter and Instagram. I always forget what they're called for some reason. Uh, I'm at EV Opinion. Uh, and until next time, uh, take care. See you soon.